Well, hi everyone. Here I am at my front door, getting ready to go outside and explain what I'm fixing to do today. This is what I have on my front porch, and this is the wreath I have on my front door, which is huge. Now, I decided the other day that I would put one of my old grapevine wreaths out here on my light post. And here I have another little flag that matches that one. Well, anyway, regarding this lovely grapevine wreath, which is pretty from a distance, but I have decided I, I need to make a deco mesh wreath. Everything is literally, I had a my last name's initial right there. It obviously melted right off. My Florida leaves are, are coming right off, as you can see. So... It's just not holding up well. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new deco mesh wreath with a birdhouse, kind of to match the birdhouse theme up there. I can't. Find I will see you when I get back in my house and start working on that wreath. But I just wanted to show you guys where it would go. And of course I'll show you, you know, the finished product when I get it done. I've got a light out up there. Uh-oh. I've replaced the lights. These lights in the windows stay on all the time. Again, if y'all want to take a look at the story behind the window lights, I have a little story in my home tour. I'll give you a link for that in the uh, body of this blog. So as I said, I'm going to make a deco mesh wreath, and my husband just has helped me out immensely here. He, I'm going to use this birdhouse. And he actually drilled holes in the back of it for me because I'm not going to use any glue on this wreath. So he actually drilled holes in the back and he put uh, ties on there so I can put and tie them on. See that? Pretty cool. So I also, of course, I'm going to do a deco mesh. So there's my mesh ribbon. It's 21 inches by 24 feet. I just will need one. Figured that out with that wreath the other day. I'll just need one of these for a 16 inch wreath frame. I bought this. This is in the fall, came in the fall section, so I got it for 40% off. And these actually came out of the fall section, so they are also 40% off. We're also 40% off of $3.99. But these are cool because they have a clip on the back. And I thought that will work better if I can just clip these flowers into the wreath. And then here's that red polka dotted burlap ribbon that I'll make a bow out of. Alrighty, here we go. Standing here at my kitchen island. As always, I'm going to start with the outer ring of the work wreath and work my way all the way around the outside and then all the way around the inside. So here we go. And I just unroll it, remember, on the floor. Start, and I leave a little bit hanging over the edge there so I can tuck it between the inner and outer ring and behind. Tuck it back in there. Again, I leave about 11 or 12 inches and back it up and put it into the twist tie or chenille ties. Alrighty, here I come around to the end of where I start. Here's where I started, right here. So I'm going to make one more big loop and attach it into that last twist tie. Right on top, I'm going to add it right on top of where I put the first tuff. Okay, now I'm going to transfer into the inner ring. So. I'm going to kind of point in this direction and start with a loop. The reason I picked this color too was hopefully it will mimic burlap, the burlap color, and kind of look like a burlap wreath from a distance. Hopefully that will be the case. And I'm going to work my way on around. Right. 
goodness, I only have one more to do, and add it right in to where I started the inner ring, right on top of where I started. There we go. And I'm going to trim off the. I tuck this back behind. My goodness, it's going to be a pretty full looking wreath, which is good because that's the way I like them. Again, you are never going to get this perfect. So, one thing good about this stuff is it is pliable enough where you can smush it or fluff it wherever you need to make it look uniform. Okay, the next thing going to add this red and it's got a little bit of a kind of a burlapy color running through it so, so just on the outside this is much much nicer to work with going to work around the outside. I'll speed her up for you. Here I am coming into the end and you know what I've decided to do? I think I'm going to go ahead and take it around on the inner ring too because I'm really liking how this looks. So I'm going to transfer over, I just tied it right into the, where I started, I'm going to transfer over to the inner ring now and do big tufts all the way around the inner ring too. So here we go, I'll be back. And at the end, so one more little tuft. You'll see I'm kind of crisscrossing these here, but I think I'll just put the bow there or the birdhouse there and that'll cover up that kind of messy looking stuff. Again, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no right or wrong way. There we go. Now I'm all tied in all the way around. Boy, I think I'm really liking that so far. And just put a little vision in your head of what you want it to look like or something close to what you want it to look like and just work it around. Okay, next thing I think I'm going to do is make a bow. Let's see, see if here. I can. Again, just throw it down on the floor because I'm probably going to use most of it. pipe planer to hold the bow on the wreath. So there we go. Let me trim these two tails here. Actually, I think I might pull one of these up and around the top like that. And the other two, I think I will tuft in there. I'll be back. Alrighty, first thing I'm gonna do is come up the, out the top of the bow and I'm gonna tuff it in and kind of make it look like a loop of the bow here. And catch it in the twist tie up here. Like that. And then I think I might try to catch it one more time as we're coming around the top here. I will do this. Right here. Catch it. And I'm going to trim the edge like I always do, fold it in half, and then go. And that gives you two points. 
I don't know how that's gonna look because I've never done it this way before, but we'll see when we're done. Now, let's turn it around. Don't wanna like that, all right. And I'm gonna combine these two together over here. Just similar to what I did on the fall wreath over there. And make a couple of tufts and catch them in the twist ties again. And actually, I think I'm just gonna catch it once on this one and then wait till I kinda, well, let me see if I can go. I was gonna say wait till I hang it up, but let me go ahead and cut the tails kind of to the edge of the loops. This one. Make this one just a smidge longer. There we go. We'll see how that looks when we hang it up. Now I'm going to fluff out the bow. Grab the birdhouse. I think that's going to be the top right there. So let's put him down a little bit lower than the bow. And like I said, my husband put some holes, drilled some holes in the back of this. Okie dokie, I'm back. I kind of had to muscle this birdhouse on. It was not easy, to be honest with you, but I finally got it on. It's down there nice and tight. And I fluffed out my bow, and I'm trying to figure out now where to put these clippy flowers. So I thought I would do a bunch down here, kind of underneath the birdhouse. So I'm just using the clips and just kind of clipping them on like that. Just clipping them right to the deco mesh. Here we are with the flowers in place. I've ended up putting I ended up putting two underneath the birdhouse and a few around the top and one here under the bow. And I've decided it still needs a little something else. And I decided, I learned with another wreath I did a while back that I like to incorporate, when I do a burlap bow with a deco mesh like this, I like to incorporate it all the way around the wreath or it looks lopsided to me. So thankfully I had purchased another bolt of the wire edged ribbon, same stuff I made the bow out of. So I think what I'll do is my little measure out a you know, 10 inch lengths and then a handy dandy tape measure here. And measure out 10 inch lengths like this. I'll probably do If I can do two at a time, fold them in half and start at the outside edge and cut at an angle. That on both sides, both ends. Let's do all of them, all the edges first, the ends first. Let's see where I can add these in over here. Well, here we go. Here's the finished product. I ended up cutting some more of those 10 inch pieces and I ended up putting them around. I piled two on top of one another there because I really just wanted to bring the polka dots in. And I didn't want to go buy more flowers, to be honest. I wanted to kind of do this wreath cheaply. I'm going to go and hang it out on the light post here a little while. And I'll take a final video out there to show you the whole vision come to fruition. Okay, All right, my last thing to do is to spray this wreath with this. 
stuff really works. So I try to spray all my outdoor wreaths that are going to be in the weather, especially the burlap and the flowers. And it really does keep them nice. I'm going to try not to spray my husband here, who is being so kind as to hold this wreath. And that's it. And now we're going to go ahead and put it on the light post, and I'll show you the finished product in a second. Well, there we go. There it is, hung in its spot. I think I like it. And I think it goes really well with the cardinal flags and the red gazing ball and the red Gerber daisies. It's a nice generic kind of a wreath that I can put up, like even early spring, you know, or this is a good interim time between now and when my fall stuff goes up. So, and this is not going to fall apart on me and wilt in the sunlight. So anyway, there we go. I accomplished my goal for the day. And remember you guys, never be afraid just to try because, you know, it's your creation. And if you like the way it looks in the end, that's what's important. Okay, until next time, y'all take good care. Bye-bye.